You're watching Higher Things Video Shorts with me, Pastor Chris Hall. If you're looking for an easy way to support Higher Things, remember to like, share, and subscribe. Also hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any Higher Things content. You can follow Higher Things on social media and our website over at www.higherthings.org. If you love what we're doing in Higher Things, we ask that you remember us in your donations and prayers. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Weeding Through History, this time where we start with the birth of Dr. Luther and walk almost all the way to today in the history of at least the Lutheran Church. Maybe once we're done with this, we'll get to the rest of the church, but there's a lot here. So last week, we stopped right at 1517. So what we're looking at today is 1517 up to the Diet of Worms, or Worms, W O R. M-S. So I don't know if we'll pronounce it like an English person. We'll say worms today. So earlier, around 1512, Luther went to Rome. Now, when Luther traveled to Rome, he was going as a representative of his Augustinian order. And when he went there, he took legal briefings and he did all the pilgrimage stuff. He went and saw the skull of St. John the Baptist. He prayed on the steps and our father and released his grandfather from purgatory. He did all of the things to atone for not just his sins, but other sins. He looked at these things called relics, indulgences, and all this. So is the, in this lovely system of penance, Luther did some good work. Now, at the time when Luther went to Rome, Julius II was the Pope. Now, Julius was a big wartime Pope. He fought in battles and everything, increasing the papal states and his authority there. Now, after Julius was Leo X. Was I right? Yes, I believe so. Leo X. Well, you know what? I may be wrong on that. Was Alexander beforehand? It may have been Alexander. There was Alexander, then Pope Leo X. So I get the popes mixed up sometimes. So praise the Lord, I'm not saved by knowing all the popes in a row. But Leo X comes up, and he's a little different than Julius. He is about building this and finishing St. Peter's Basilica. But to do this, he needs to raise some money. He needs to raise funds to do it. So he borrows money, but then to get the money and pay it back, he sends out indulgence preachers. And one of the most prominent ones is around Luther's area, and his name is Johann Tetzel. Now, Tetzel would go into towns and put on these big shows in order to sell indulgences, these pieces of papers, declarations from the Pope that would forgive you your sins. He would, Tetzel would do this thing where he'd put his hand in wax, like a, dip it in wax over and over again and develop this big, thick exterior of wax. And he'd have someone bring a, a torch. He'd put his hand over it and show a burning and everything. So it looks like he's actually burning his flesh, which he wasn't doing. He was just burning the wax away. And he'd take his hand off right when the flame touched him and say, see how it burns you, and this is what you're rescued from if you get this indulgence. When you put the coin, he had this great saying. He said, every time a coin in the coffer rings, a soul from purgatory springs. So there's an issue with this. So Luther's, while Tetzel's preaching and doing this, Luther is Professor Wittenberg. He's teaching the scriptures. He's debating theologies with other guys like Johann Eck, about the free will or the bound will called the Heidelberg Disputations. He's having these great discussions of the Leipzig debates. So he hears all these things and he decides to write basically what we would see today as an academic discussion. And it's called the 95 Theses. So this is October 31st, 1517. Some people say Luther gave the theses to another guy to go nail on the doors, but I'm a romantic, so I think Luther did it himself. He took the theses, took it to the door, and nailed them there. Now, they're in Latin, not in German, but in Latin. So he put them up there to strike up a conversation on the Christian life, indulgences, purgatory, the Pope, and all these things. 
and it explodes. It blows up. He ends up writing a summary of the 95 Thesis. He starts having all these other debates. He's still teaching theology. And in this time, he writes three phenomenal treatises. And he writes them in the year 1520. The Babylonian Captivity of the Church, which is Luther's summary of the sacramental system in the Roman Catholic Church. A letter to the German nobility, which is basically him saying what authority they have, secular and spiritual. But then the other one, which is, in my opinion, one of his best writings ever, The Freedom of a Christian. And he wrote these three treatises along with other works, his 95 Theses, his thesis at the Heidelberg Disputations. And as he keeps writing, the problems start coming to him. And finally, the Pope convinces Charles V, who at this time is the Holy Roman Emperor. Now, Charles V, this, you have to get this image with Luther. Luther is basically a professor at this startup university in Wittenberg. Not a big place. He's not in Paris. He's not in Prague. He's not in Rome. He's in Wittenberg. So it's not like a big thing. So he's causing all this stir. Charles V calls a diet, basically a trial, to look at Luther's theology. Now, this is who Charles V is. He's the king of Spain. He rules the Netherlands. He's the Holy Roman Emperor, which is Germany and everything. The Pope is terrified of him. His, his aunt was Henry VIII's first wife. <laughs> and... France is pretty terrified of him, too. He's basically the guy in Europe. No one's more powerful than Charles V. So you have him, and Luther goes to the Diet of Worms to defend his theology. So what do we learn from this? Because it's not just we learn these little facts from history just to know them and spit them out and sound smart. What's the big deal about this? Well, the reality is Luther was acting in his vocation as a professor of theology, his job was to be as faithful to the word as possible and to teach it with clarity. And that's why he wrote the thesis. That's why he debated. That's why he wrote documents to make sure people knew this, that they knew what the truth is. And where did it land them? In some trouble, it's a pretty big heap of trouble. When you have the guy who basically rules all of Europe saying, I'm going to put you on trial. So that's what we're going to cover next time is the actual diet of Varms, what Luther went through those few days, and we get one of his most famous sayings, you know, here I stand, I can do no other. We'll get to that next time and go through all the way up to the Imbolcovit sermons, and it's going to be fun time. So God bless you all, and I had fun time walking through this little brief moment of history with you. Talk to you soon.